If you want talk, games, and fun all rolled into one, well, you've come to the right place. This is The Game Show, where host Bradley Clark and his special guests talk about the world of television game and competition shows. But Bradley's guests aren't here to just talk. They came to play a game as well. What will today's topic be? What game does Bradley have planned? There's only one way to find out. It's time to start the show. You heard the man. Welcome to The Game Show. And here's your host, the Bradster himself, Bradley Clark. It certainly is time to start the show. Thank you so much, Austin Angelo. I'm Bradley Clark, and welcome to another episode of The Game Show, the talk show about the world of television game and competition shows. Now, over the years, there have been a lot of game shows that have been called unique, from Jeopardy giving its contestants the answers and not the questions, to Match Game and its provocative for the times fill-in-the-blank statements, to Deal or No Deal, amping up the phrase, a game of chance. However, while many game shows fall under the unique category, a select few can be defined as revolutionary. A revolutionary game show is one that has immensely impacted the game show genre, and quite possibly, the television industry for the better. One of those revolutionary game shows first aired on American television in 1999 and became a cultural phenomenon. Starting tonight and every night for the next two weeks, join us from New York City as we play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, everybody, and welcome to the premiere of the biggest, most exciting, most dramatic television program that I or you or anyone else has ever seen. What you just heard was the opening of the first ever episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with host Regis Philbin. Millionaire was the first network game show to offer every single contestant the chance to win $1 million and started the trend of the big money primetime game shows we know today. In 2002, Millionaire began a syndicated daytime run with host Meredith Vieira. And now 16 seasons later, this is the man saying the famous catchphrase, is that your final answer? Hi, I'm Chris Harrison, host of the all-new Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. This season, we're mixing things up a little. No more jumping questions, no more easy answers. Just a single player determined to win that million dollars. One person answering the question, who wants to be a millionaire? You guys ready to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You may know him as the host of the little-known television series called The Bachelor and the Bachelorette, but as a game show enthusiast first and foremost, I know him as the current host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Joining me as my special guest on this episode of The Game Show is none other than Chris Harrison. Chris, how's it going? Doing great. Thanks for having me. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for joining me. And I want to ask you right at the top of the show, would you mind saying to me, Bradley Clark. Is that your final answer? Well, here's the thing, Bradley. Yes. I actually never say that on the show. A little known fact, if you've watched over the last three years, I usually just say, Bradley Clark, is that your final? You know what? Come to think of it, now, I watch the show as much as I can. I try to watch every day. I can't recall you ever actually saying final answer. And come to think of it, that goes for Terry Crews, Cedric the Entertainer, and even Meredith Vieira, the three hosts that preceded you. They cut out the word answer most of the time. Usually it's just, is that your final or just final? Well, the thing with me is I grew up, you know, a fan of the show, just like everybody else did, you know, in college and all that. We would gather around in the fraternity house or whatever, and ABC had it on, I think, seven to eight nights a week. And we all just loved Regis, and we watched Regis do this. And so that was kind of his thing, and that became so synonymous with Regis saying, final answer that, I don't know, I started the show three years ago and I started saying that and it just felt wrong. I felt like I was kind of ripping off Regis and so I stopped and I just kind of found my own thing and now I just say final. Every now and then I might say final answer, but for the most part, I kind of, as an homage to Regis, decided I wouldn't take that from him. I felt like that was his. Is that your final answer? I think that's a great gesture because Regis was the one who started this show in 1999 and just finding that out, I commend you. You know, I was so happy when Drew Carey decided to continue the legacy of Bob Barker by saying, help control the pet population, have your pet spayed or neutered at the end of every Price is Right episode. And to know now, Chris, that you don't say final answer out of respect for what Regis did for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. As a loyal game show fan, I want to say thank you because I don't think many hosts, if they were in your position, would have done that. 
So speaking on behalf of all the game show fans and millionaire fans, including myself, thank you, Chris. Well, I'm a student of the game. I'm a student of hosting. I really respect hosts that have come before me, and I watched the likes of Regis and Bob Barker and Richard Dawson and all these guys, you know, hone their craft and help me hone mine. But yeah, you got to have a little respect for those that came before you, and Regis was as good as it gets at what he did. Whether you like him or not is kind of beside the fact, but his style and the way he hosts, you had to respect that. You really had it down, and that's kind of how I feel. You may not like me as a host, but there's not much I can do about that, but I have my style and I have the way I do it, and you always stick to that, and Regis was a great example of that. Oh, you are absolutely right, and Regis is probably one of the reasons why we're actually sitting here today still talking about who wants to be a millionaire all these years later. And we already started the conversation, which I love, but just as a breakdown, we're going to talk about your run so far as host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and in particular, this season, Millionaire is 16th and your third is host. And then later on, I love to play a game with all of my guests on every episode. So today, Chris, I have a millionaire-themed game just for you to play. Can you believe it? I kind of can believe it, but I, let's bring it on. I, I like this. What's at stake? Is it a million dollars? It's not a million dollars. It's pride and knowing that you can answer questions like all the other contestants. <laughs> I'm going to do that with my contestants this year. Guys, we're taking the money off the table. This is for pride. <laughs> <laughs> so are you ready to talk about Millionaire? Love to. Audience, are you ready to talk about Millionaire? They said they would love to. Then let's talk about who wants to be a millionaire. So you mentioned this briefly before, but I'm presuming since you've studied the way that Regis hosted the show and you're giving an homage to Regis when you host, that you must have been a fan of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire since 1999. For sure. I mean, it changed television. You know, much like American Idol changed TV in more recent history, if you think back to what Millionaire did to television at the time, it really did change it. I mean, we had never seen anything like that, that kind of phenomenon, when it came around. And Regis, with his style and the way he hosts, and I always pay attention to that. I mean, remember the monochromatic suits and shirts and ties? I mean, it just seemed bigger than life. It captivated our country. And so much so that ABC really went too far and abused it and kind of ran it into the ground. But ABC, you have to remember at the time, as a network, was not doing well. They really didn't have any other shows, and so they really fed the hopes and dreams of the entire network on Millionaire. You know, it sustained the entire network for quite some time. But it was a huge phenomenon, and it was fun to play, and it was very different. And the fact that we were going for a million dollars just seemed outrageous. I mean, it was such a huge amount of money that no one had ever played for. Right. I was actually two years old when the show first premiered. But as I've grown older and really appreciate the game show genre, by the way, my dream in life is to be a game show host just like you. Well, that's a good dream to have. You know, it's funny, it was never really my dream to do a game show. I, mean, I just love hosting. You know, I've always loved hosting. I love TV. I love live TV. I cut my teeth as a sportscaster many years ago and in news. But there's very few outlets for someone who really loves to host TV. And obviously, game shows are a great outlet. They're a great vehicle to drive if you love doing television. Absolutely. And growing up, Millionaire was such a great show for me because since it was so simple, you could literally play it anywhere. And that's what I did. I would play Millionaire wherever I went, waiting for the bus. I'd play with my parents. Or in the summer, I would actually play Millionaire in a swimming pool with my friends. And I would make Millionaire games to do as class projects. I would do all the sound effects. Everyone thought I was crazy for doing that, but I loved it. So Millionaire will always hold a special place in my heart because this is one of the shows that have helped me grow as a host. And I just found it really interesting that you said you never dreamed of hosting a game show when you actually hosted a couple game shows in the past. In 2001, you did GSN's Mall Masters, and back in 2011, you hosted You Deserve It on ABC, which, by the way, I really enjoyed You Deserve It, and I was really disappointed that it didn't get picked up for another season. Yeah, for sure. I was, too. That's what's funny about game shows is, you know, I did, I did Mall Masters back in the day, and it wasn't that I didn't want to host the game shows. You know, growing up, first of all, I just, I never really thought much about television and that version of it, what I would get into. When I got to college is really when I fell in love with TV, and that was through sports casting, and I kind of thought that's the way my life would go. And then when I came out to L.A., I started bumping into other projects like Home and Garden Show. I did the Stone Stanley Show. You mentioned Mall Masters at Mall of America. From the state that gave us rollerblades, the Vikings, and a mall with over 500 stores and a seven-acre indoor theme park, it's Mall Masters at Mall of America. And I'm your host, Chris Harrison. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Mall Masters at Mall of America. And you just 
preserve it was a phenomenal concept that was produced well, and then we lost it in post-production, and we lost it in the concept of fulfilling the idea that you were playing for somebody else and leaving the studio. That's where that show kind of fell apart. We were kind of trying to shove 10 pounds of you-know-what into a five-pound sack. It was just too much. But the show itself was fantastic. Welcome to You Deserve It, the show that believes it's better to give than to receive. I was really disappointed it didn't come off better. And when I saw the first episode, I knew we were in trouble. Yeah, it's too bad that You Deserve It didn't get the credibility that it deserved because I really enjoyed the actual game being played. It was basically a combination of 20 questions and deal or no deal in a sense. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the gameplay, I'll briefly explain it. Actually, you know what? Instead of me explaining it, Chris, I'll let you explain it in this clip from You Deserve It. Here's how the game works. Six rounds from 10000 to a quarter of a million dollars. First round, we're $10,000. To win a round, you have to solve a who, what, or where question. There are 10 clues to help you along the way. The first clue is always free, but the rest you're gonna have to pay for. Some are cheap, but some are disastrously steep. And every penny comes out of your potential prize money. I still remember watching You Deserve It for the first time and thinking how much I really wanted to play the game because the questions were so fun to try to figure out. But again, it's unfortunate that the show didn't do as well as hoped. Yeah, and the idea was, you know, you deserve it. You had to play for somebody who deserved it in your life. So you were playing for somebody else, which I loved. It was a kind of a great concept and a little bit different. So the interesting thing was the game was phenomenal. Like you said, the concept was great. But then we would try to surprise the person that you were playing for. And that's really where the show kind of fell apart. It just didn't look good. When you're in a studio with the lights, the bells, the whistles, the HD quality, and everything's controlled, and then you leave that studio, it just had a very odd feel, and you lost a lot of the momentum of the show. And so that's kind of where it fell apart, unfortunately. It's too bad, because once you do something once, it's hard in television to go back and fix it. It's like a restaurant. People are going to come eat once. If they don't like it, you can't tell them you changed the menu and they're going to come back. They will always remember that bad meal they had. In television, it's the same way. Right. So when you were given this opportunity to do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, was it an automatic yes? It wasn't, actually, enough. It really came out of the blue. I will remember the day vividly because I just had gotten off the road from The Bachelor, so I was probably exhausted, sleep-deprived, and my agent called, and oddly enough, he said, be by your phone, I'm going to call you in 10 more minutes. And I said, okay, that's odd. You called me to tell me you're going to call me. But he called me back and said, well, what I couldn't tell you before was ABC is making a change, and they want a new host of Millionaire, and you are that guy. And so I immediately said, what does that entail? And they said, you know, 175 episodes. And I said, that's impossible. I don't have that kind of time. Between Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, and any other shows I do, there's no way I could fit it in the schedule. And apparently that wasn't true. You can fit it in the schedule if they want you to. <laughs> but it really is, in all seriousness, one of those dream calls because typically you go audition, you have to, you know, go through the hoops. And it was one of those rare cases where ABC was calling me saying, no, you are going to host this show. It was kind of on the outs and the show was not doing well. But they didn't want to give up on it, thankfully. And they said, we really think that you can help bring this show back to where it was. And so I'm very honored to get that kind of a call and to get that opportunity because there are very few. And if you're a game show fan, you know, there's a handful of shows that are that kind of iconic, legendary shows. And when you get a chance to host those, when you get a chance to drive that Ferrari, you jump at it. You know, you really do. And so as soon as I figured we could fit it into my schedule, I was absolutely on board. Well, I'm so glad you were able to fit it in your schedule. I thoroughly enjoy watching you on the show, and this is your third season out there, and it just seems like you're so comfortable, and you really enjoy being with these contestants and giving away all this money. Well, you know, the people that I loved back in the day, you know, you watch the Richard Dawson's and then especially Bob Barker, and they were just, they're not game show hosty, if that makes any sense. They're not over the top. They let the moments come to them, and they let moments breathe, and they let the game, and they let the contestants drive the show. And when it warrants, get excited. But don't always try to make everything the greatest moment ever because it's not. And so with Millionaire, the concept is fantastic. The drama builds with the money and the questions get harder. So the drama is there. It comes. You don't have to force it. And as a host, you get to be a fan. I want these people to win. I want to give away money. It's not my money. So I would love to give away as much money as possible. And so I'm not a disinterested third party. I am there to help guide you and try to help you in any way I can, as long as it's fair and part of the rules. I do try to help them. I want them to win. 
you mentioned that when you were asked to host the show, they were doing some changes. And one of the big changes was after five years, they went back to the original millionaire money tree format. Here's what you're up against. 14 questions. The money value is growing from $500 all the way up to $1 million. Every question you answer correctly moves you one step closer to that top prize. Remember, at any time, you can walk away with the money you've earned up to that point. If you give me an incorrect answer, you walk away with nothing until you get to those two thresholds at $5,000 and then again at $50,000. You also have your three lifelines. The audience can help you with a question. 50-50, I take away two incorrect answers and you have your plus one. Whose idea was it to go back to that format? Well, the executives in charge of the show, when they called me, I had watched the show, but I kind of lost interest in the show, like a lot of people, because and everybody does this. When you start to change things, it's a slippery slope, and I get it. You know, you're kind of grasping at straws, and they started messing with the original concept, and they took away what was great about the show, and that is you have to answer these 14 questions in order, and the money value will grow, and so will the tension and the drama and the difficulty. That's the whole point of the show is you have to go in this order, these 14 questions, and this is your test. When you start skipping questions and adding all these different concepts to it and not knowing what money is next. And it was so convoluted, you lost the beauty of the show. You took out the heart of it. And so it wasn't necessarily on the host that was before me as much as when you mess with the heart of a show, nobody can recreate that. So it was huge for me when they sat me down and said, we are going to go back. And these were the executives in charge, the executive producers. And I said, you have to. You have to go back to what Regis was doing, the original concept that was brought over from Great Britain by Michael Davies. As you can probably see, there really is a million pounds right here. Keep back, audience. <laughs> Waiting to be won. And this is how it can be won. The rules are so simple, even I can understand them. The more questions that Graham gets right, the more money he'll win. Now, he doesn't have to decide whether to play on until he's seen the question and the four possible answers. I think it's probably the only show in the world that does this. Now, at any stage, Graham can quit and keep the money he's already won. If he decides to answer a question and gets it wrong, he either goes home with absolutely nothing, I hope that doesn't happen. If he's got as far as question five, he gets £1,000 and keeps £1,000. If he gets to question 10, £32,000, he goes home with thirty-two grand tonight, no matter what. And we certainly don't want Graham to go home empty-handed, so we've given him three lifelines to use. Now, if he gets a bit stuck, he can phone a friend, uh, he can ask the audience, or he can go 50-50, where we get rid of two of the wrong answers. It was perfect. It works. It's legendary. Don't mess with that. Just do it better. And that's what we decided to do, is we're going to go back to what made the show great, but we're just going to do it better. So since the original format was brought back, this begs the question, was there ever any talk of bringing back the infamous Hot Seat or the original Millionaire Music? Yeah, you know, the hot seat has been a hot topic for all of us. I mean, I would definitely love it because when I'm on the set for, you know, nine hours a day when we're shooting six or seven episodes in Las Vegas over the summer, I would love to be sitting down all day. But I think what they decided was in the daytime audience, it just feels a little more casual and a little more daytime to be standing up and to have the podiums as opposed to the hot seat. I would like to see us bring this back in prime time, and there is talk of that. And if we do that, I would love to bring back the hot seat and do it. I don't know if you would do the fastest finger thing, and if you remember, that's how contestants got on. And now let's find out who our very first contestant to play for $1 million will be. Here's how we're going to do it. In a moment, a question and four possible answers will appear on your screens. The player who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our first contestant. But I would definitely love to bring back the hot seat. Well, in 2009, Millionaire was brought back to primetime for the show's 10th anniversary special. So maybe for a 20th anniversary special in 2019, Millionaire will once again be brought back to primetime. Well, hopefully we won't have to wait that long. I would love to bring back, even if it's our Whiz Kids week, which is such an incredible week, and we're actually doing four of them this season. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Whiz Kids Week. We've got some of America's best young students here today. They may know their way around a final exam, but they've never been tested quite like this. This is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Welcome to Whiz Kids Week on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I would love to do primetime Whiz Kids, do some sort of specialty week, but do it over the summer. Just have a fun little three, four, five, six week run and get it back into primetime where everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's such great family viewing. I have two kids and my kids come on set, they watch the show. And we all play it. It's so relatable. And 
you never know who's going to do good or bad depending on where that trivia falls. And some of the shows, I crush it. Some of the shows, my teenage kids crush me. And so it's just fun to watch. It's fun to play. You know what's great about the show is that you never know what's going to come up. And you may not know a $1,000 question, but... It gets so exciting if you know the answer to a half a million dollar question. It's such a ride of roller coasters, not just dramatically with the lights and the sound, but just the actual content of the show. You don't know what's coming up. I mean, I sometimes don't know the $7,000 or the $10,000 questions. Then I look at the $100,000 question. I go, wow, I know that. If I was there, I would have won $100,000. You're fucking right. $100,000. At the beginning of the day, I get one chance to look through all the questions. There's like 13 or 14 stacks of questions, and I sit with a lawyer, executive producer, research, and this is the last time everybody gets to hear me read the question and the answers out loud. I don't obviously get to see the answers, but I get to read the questions and the multiple choice answers. So any changes that need to be made or anything that I feel is confusing, it's our last chance to kind of go over it. But there's days when I feel like I could just cruise through a game Get up to that 100000 no problem. But like you said, then there's days when I'm a couple questions in, and I'm like, guys, I don't even know the answer to this. James Raleigh, our executive producer, who's been in charge of the show for, I think, four or five years now, and does a phenomenal job. And talk about an unsung hero behind the scenes. He has this great quote, trivia is only hard if you don't know the answer. <laughs> and it's funny and it's simple, but it's so true. You know, what you find easy, I might find impossible and vice versa. If it falls in your wheelhouse, trivia is not hard at all. But man, when it's outside of your scope of knowledge and outside your range, it is next to impossible. Trivia is only hard if you don't know the answer. I want that quote on a (laughs) t-shirt. So Alex Trebek, the host of Jeopardy, says he usually knows about 70 to 80 percent of the show's material. So what percentage of millionaires material would you say you have known based on the questions you've seen as your time as host? Well, Alex is smarter than I am. I mean, honestly, I would probably say it's down to 40, 50 percent. It's, you know, half and half. I tell you this, I've become a better test taker being the host over three years. I learned how to break questions down, how to pull things out, how to kind of work through history and events and places I've been to kind of get at least narrowing down to a 50-50 or eliminating something. It's been fascinating to watch the type of contestants that have come across that I've learned from. So you've mentioned that you're doing WizKids Week again, which I am a huge fan of. You know, it's funny. A lot of these shows now are doing kid-themed specials, and it's so weird that now they're doing all this stuff. But when I was a kid, the only thing they had was Kid Jeopardy. But they did have Kid Millionaire. Back when Regis did it, they had like a Thanksgiving special. They had parents and kids play together. That was always fun to watch. Since so many kids watch the show and have written to us over the past year, pleading to be on, well, we thought, hey, why not? So last night, Thanksgiving... We had kids and their parents in the hot seat together. Very interesting. We saw some smart kids answer some really difficult questions. On some of these questions, frankly, the parents would have been lost if they weren't here. So I'm glad that they're still doing kid-themed shows because it gets the young, bright minds out there. And I'm sure you're as impressed with these kids as everyone else. It's fascinating to watch these young kids come in and play the show. It is stunning to me how smart they are, how poised and confident. And to your point, you know, they have a plus one. That is the phone a friend. You get a plus one. And often they'll use either a teacher or a parent or whatever. And more times than not, it's the plus one that comes in and screws things up for the kids. And the kids are going great. And then the plus one will come in and talk them out of something or derail them. And it's fascinating just how brilliant these kids are in memorizing presidents and the periodic table and the long math that they just went through in two seconds. It just blows me away. And there's nothing more raw, more honest, more just engaging than these young kids and to watch them. There's kind of raw emotion. And so it's fun for me as a host to tap into that. And as a dad, to kind of treat them as my own kids and to walk them through the game. And I think it probably is our most captivating weeks of television. That's why I want to take it to primetime. It lends itself to primetime TV because it's just that good. Are you going to do Bachelor Fan Favorites Week again this year? Welcome to Bachelor Fan Favorites Week, where your favorites from The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are stopping by to win big money for charity. I can't wait to see what these guys can do. So let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bachelor Fan Favorites Week on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? We really did. We backed away from it. You know, I did it the first two seasons I was hosting, and it was fun. But it's kind of kitschy, and we had Ben H. We had Ben come on and play for a charity he was doing. He's a good friend of mine. But what we did is instead, 
you'll probably understand this. I don't love, and this sounds terrible, but I don't love the charity weeks. They're not my favorite as a host because when you're playing for somebody else, again, that changes the game. It changes your strategy and it changes your risk taking because you're less apt to go for it and really gamble when you're gambling with money that's going to a charity because you look bad at the person. And I've done this before. I've played games and I've done it for charity. And as soon as you win a little money, you're like, okay, you know, I don't want to be that jerk that just lost $10,000 for his charity because you seem greedy and you seem like a bad person. And so it changes the game. So for that reason, I don't love the charity weeks, although we do a few of them. We've cut down dramatically on those. But I love specialty weeks that are for people that really get the money, like Victory for Veterans Week. Hey, everybody. It's Victory for Veterans Week. We've invited some of the men and women who've served bravely in our armed forces to come see if they can join the ranks of our million dollar winners. Get ready. It's time to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah! Hey, everybody, welcome to Millionaire. It's Victory for Veterans Week. Teachers, first responders, people that deserve the money get to come on and play, and they keep the money. And I love that because. It's for them. If they want to risk it, it's their money. And so I, I do love that. Long story short, in place of the Bachelor Week, what we have are couples, newly engaged couples coming on to play together. So it's still kind of that Bachelor theme, and it kind of plays into my other life. But it's the people starting their life together that are really playing for this money, which is cool. I think that's a great idea. And what a great way to test your relationship as a newly official couple than to play millionaire and to agree on answers to multiple choice questions. But many game shows have had special theme weeks, but there is one theme week that not one game show has tried before. But I think millionaire would be a great platform for my theme week idea. What is it? Drum roll, please. Game show super fans week. So you have contestants who are considered know-it-alls about game shows, like myself. And all the questions would be about game shows. Years ago, they had Million Dollar Movie Week, where all the questions were about movies. But if you had Game Show Super Fan Week, all the questions on a game show will be about game shows. That's pretty funny. That's interesting. What's also interesting is I said you get this wide variety of contestants on the show. And you do get contestants that have played on other game shows. You know, we've had Ken Jennings. We've had people that have been on Jeopardy. And they've done well. But oftentimes, the Jeopardy champs don't really translate over to Millionaire. Millionaire is a much harder game to play than Jeopardy. It's much more challenging because Jeopardy, you can skip questions. You can get a question wrong. You can play to your strengths, their strategy. And you have a much wider range to play. Again, it's just a different skill set. It's not that it's easy, but it's just a different skill set. And when you come to Millionaire, again, it's trivia. But you get these 14 questions and these 14 questions in a row. You cannot skip one and you cannot miss one. And so it's a much different game than going on jumping. But we do. We get these game show and trivia masters, and I love playing with them just because they bring a different vibe to the game because they're not necessarily trying to win the money as much as they're trying to beat the game. And I love that. What you just said is what I love about watching recurring game show contestants play on different game shows because every game, especially trivia games, is unique. So watching them adapt and strategize to different game formats is fascinating to me, particularly when I've seen the contestant play on different game shows before and they've done well. So that's my theme week idea, Game Show Super Fans Week, with all the questions being about game shows. So if you use it, let me know and I'll head down to Vegas to see it in action. Have you ever auditioned? Not for Millionaire. I mean, what's stopping you? I know. I've been wanting to try for years and years, and I think it's about time to try out. Next time it comes around, I'll definitely give it a go. Well, auditions will be coming up soon. I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to call you myself, and I'm going to tell you where you're going to be going, and you're going to do this. If you have the confidence in me, I would definitely do it. You know what's stunning to me is I don't know why more people don't. I will say over the last three years I've been doing this, the audition process, and Liz Harris, who's my co-executive producer along with James Rowley, she is, again, another behind-the-scenes hero and is just incredible at what she does. She works on several different shows. She works on Pyramid. She's done, you know, other game shows. She is so good at casting this show and holding the auditions and finding the right contestants. Because, again, it takes a certain type of contestant to really fit into that millionaire mold. So you take the test. There's 30 questions. And you have 10 minutes to take the test. And it kind of just depends on how you do. It depends on how you do, your personality, what the producers see in you, and you know, your story. And you never know. You don't have to ace the test. You have to do pretty well. 
But you don't have to ace it. You don't have to get 30 for 30. But it's a pretty easy thing to go do, to go take this test and audition. And with a million dollars on the line, I don't know why you wouldn't. And our show, we just passed the $100 million mark, giving away $100 million, more money than any other game show in history. We give away more money every day than every game show. And so even if you don't win the million, you have a great chance to win a ton of money. I was actually wondering when Millionaire would hit the $100 million mark because I know the money total was close to $100 million for quite some time. And it's great that Millionaire has finally reached that mark. But I want to jump on something you just mentioned regarding not having to win the million to still win a lot of money. Because when the show returned to the original format, I was so glad that the original lower money amounts weren't kept. Because back in the day, for answering the first five questions, you won $1,000. But now it's $5,000. And even eight questions correct gets you $20,000 instead of $8,000. And reaching the second threshold wins you $50,000. So the amount of money you can win without even getting to the six-figure questions is still a lot. It is. And I often forget the kind of money we're giving away because, like you said, five questions in, you're at five grand. But you watch these other game shows. And again, I'm a fan, so I'll watch the primetime game shows. And they'll go through 30 minutes, an hour, days, and they have a chance to win 20000 or $10,000. I'm like, that's crazy. We do that before the first commercial break. That's so funny because I literally complain about that all the time. You know, there's a lot of these newer game shows that come out, but the top prizes are so low. I mean, there were shows back in the 70s and the 80s giving out more money than they do now. And Millionaire I Love, it's still $1 million at the top prize, but as you go up, you can still earn crazy, life-changing amounts of money. Yeah, and you know, there are a lot of these shows. And they, I guess there's so many bells and whistles that at the end of the day, people don't stop to think that, what am I playing for, $25,000? Like, Really? And there's no real opportunity to get the big money. You know, even if they say it's for a million or even if they say it's for $250,000, the opportunity to get that is so far-fetched. And the great thing about millionaires, you said, you can easily know the answer to a $100,000 question or a quarter million dollar question. I'll ask a question, say, for a hundred grand or a quarter million. And to watch somebody's face when they know the answer is incredible. I just saw one the other day. I was re-watching the shows. We had this kid that just graduated from med school, had loads of debt, was struggling, and I forget the medical term, but it meant passing out, basically fainting. And this kid had just graduated from med school, and so it was the medical term for that. And he just laughed. He's like, are you kidding me? This is my question. He he just, like, he almost passed out. It was great. And so you just never know, and and you really do have that opportunity to make big money. You know what's funny? I just watched that clip yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) Is it it great? Yes, I know. His eyes, he's like, holy crap. He's like, I got this. You guys ready? Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? $50,000. Here's the question. In its study of in-flight emergencies from 2008 to 2010, the New England Journal of Medicine found the most common ailment was syncope, also known as what? Heart attack, respiratory failure, fainting, or seizure? (laughs) I did just graduate from medical school. (laughs) So I should know. I was hoping that was a look of knowledge and not of, I can't believe I don't know this. No, I can't believe this is a question for me. Yeah, uh, syncope. Luck of the draw. Also known as fainting. Um, C, final answer. Apparently you did pass med school. (laughs) Yes! Yes! It was funny. He's like, I can't believe you guys just asked me that. I was like, well, it's random. That's the beauty of the show. You know, I will run through questions, but what's easy to me is I'll ask him, say, a question about the Dallas Cowboys or about sports or something like that. And I'm like, well, that's the easiest question in the world. And I look over at the contestant, and there's just a blank look on their face because maybe they weren't born in the South. Maybe they don't watch football. You know, it's funny. What's easy to me is not necessarily easy to everybody else. Absolutely. That's why millionaire is half skill and half luck. So who wants to be a millionaire has not had a traditional million dollar winner since Nancy Christie became the first and only woman to win the top prize back in 2003. And the show has not had a million dollar winner since Sam Murray's million dollar tournament of 10 win in 2009. So because it's been such a long time since a millionaire has been crowned, are you at all fearful that the show may never have a million dollar winner again? There will be. We can't talk about if it happened this season or not, but every season you go into it, you're hopeful because I want it to happen. I want to see if those confetti cannons still work. It might have been a little easier back then to kind of be able to get to that million. 
But I like the fact that we are not going to change the format. And the question, again, you just never know. We've gotten very close. In the last two seasons, I have gotten incredibly close. I have gotten to that half a million dollar question, and we just haven't gotten over the top. And at that point, you're just two questions away. You know, it's funny. When we get to the $100,000 question, you're four questions away from the million. And I always tell somebody, you know four things. That's all you have to do to get to a million dollars. All you have to do is know four things. And when you put it in that perspective, it's pretty wild to think that you can easily get to that. When you get to that threshold, that final threshold, where you get a free look at a $100,000 question, that's the other thing is you're four questions away, but the first one's a free guess because you can't lose any money. And speaking of that, I've always wondered, ever since you started using it, when did you come up with the term threshold to use for the $5,000 and $50,000 question? Because threshold hasn't really been a term used for safety levels on game shows before. But I think it's a really cool and unique word to use. Yeah, the executive, James Raleigh, the executive producer, came up with it. And I love the concept of the threshold, of getting the 5000 in your safe, and then you immediately get to seven and $10,000. And so the stakes get high, but the risk-reward to get you to that fifty is there. I always tell people, look, if you're at seven thousand, you're at ten thousand, you know you're walking away with five, I would be more apt to go for it and and to keep rolling. Now when you get to thirty, if it's just a blank guess, I don't know, but I would be hard pressed not to just try and get to that fifty thousand dollar threshold because once you're there, a free guess at a hundred thousand dollars would be hard to pass up. And that's kind of the beauty of the game now and the strategy of if you get to a hundred the sky's the limit. Like, then some crazy stuff can happen. As you said, if you know, you know. A quarter million, half a million, it'd be up there to the million. So do you think that's the reason <laughs> why there hasn't been a million-dollar winner for going on now 14 years is because not a lot of people are willing to take as many risks as they might have done before? Well, for sure, people are less apt to gamble 100 250 or half a million dollars. When you have a quarter million dollars in your pocket, you would lose two hundred thousand dollars if you got the question wrong. You would be giving back two hundred grand. That is a ton of money. So obviously, when you get to that point, the pressure is higher, the drama is higher, the risk reward is exponentially higher. But more times than not, when you are playing with a true player, someone who is that good at the game that they have answered ten, eleven, twelve questions right, they know what they don't know. And I always tell contestants that that is an important thing in any game show, is know how to stay in your lane, know what you don't know. That's as important as knowing what you do know. A lot of contestants just get to a question and they realize, this is not my wheelhouse. I don't have the information to even back into it. There's no historical markers. There's no clues. Because when you get to that high of a question, there's no simple clues that are just going to jump out at you. You just either know that stuff or you don't. And part of it's the risk-reward, but I think a lot of it is is these people are wise and they know, I just don't know it. And you're just not going to take a 25% chance at losing $200,000. Absolutely. And a perfect example of what you just mentioned, I don't know if you remember this or not, Chris, but back when Regis was still hosting the show, they had a special called Millionaire Champions where they invited back the top money winners at the time to play again. And one of those contestants was John Carpenter, the first ever million-dollar winner not only in America, but in the world. And for all of you millionaire superfans out there who want to relive John Carpenter making global game show history, here's his million-dollar moment. Well, looks like we're going going for a million dollars. I can't believe it. A million dollars and all your lifelines in tech. You didn't need those stinking lifelines, did you? Well, let me just bring you up to date here. Please. If you miss, you'll be reduced by $468,000. You'll go back down to $32,000. Here it is, a $1 million question. We rarely see these here. Only one of the contestants has ever won $500,000 on our show. So if you're ready, let's go for the million. Which of these U.S. presidents appeared on the television series Laugh-In? Lyndon Johnson? Richard Nixon, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford. Um, (laughs) I'd like to call my parents right now. Sure. Use my lifeline, call my parents. What are their names? Uh, um, My father. I'm talking to my father. Does he have a name? Tom. He does have a name, yes. (laughs) Tom. All right. Our friends at AT AT&T will get uh, your dad on the line, and we'll see if he can help you. Hello? Hello, Tom. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hi. We've got uh, your son, John, uh, with us right now. He's doing pretty well. Good. 
He's won a half million dollars. Wow. And he's going for a million dollars. <laughs> and he needs your help to get there. Okay. So he's going to come on the line, read a question, four possible answers. One of them is the right answer. And uh, the next voice you hear will be John's. John, you've got 30 seconds. Starts right now. Uh, hi, Dad. Hi. Um, I don't really need your help, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million dollars. <laughs> Uh, because the U.S. president appeared on Laughing is Richard Nixon. That's my final answer. Well, my gosh. What can I say except, Debbie, you're going to Paris, and this is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. So John returns, and he makes it up to the $500,000 question, but he immediately realizes he doesn't know the answer. Now this is John Carpenter, the man who all of America watched easily winning a million dollars because he automatically knew every answer and the only time he used a lifeline was to call his father on the million dollar question to tell him he was going to win. And he's now stumped. Here's the clip. Yeah, it's a tough decision because you're playing for a charity as if well. It was, if this was my money, um, I'm stupid enough to, to, make, to take the, uh, the chance. But look, if we all be quiet, maybe, maybe he'll speak of, to me. Maybe one of them will talk to you. Not coming, huh? Not coming through. Now, I, I promised these guys here that I was going to make this quick and easy. All righty. I am going to walk away. All right, so let's take a guess. Now, your brother thought maybe Jackie Robinson. You thought maybe Robinson or Lou Gehrig. What's your pick? I say Gehrig. Well, if you had listened to your brother, you'd have won $500,000. But that's all right. Jackie Robinson was on the first one on the step. 250000 so John walks away with $250,000, which is still a huge sum of money, but it goes to show you that even a great trivia mind like him, who had this added pressure of being the first ever million dollar winner, didn't want to risk losing over $200,000 on a question that just wasn't in his wheelhouse of knowledge. Yeah, and they're smart, and they play the percentages, and I would do the same. If I can eliminate even one, well, that changes things. Now you have a 33.3% chance. If you can eliminate two, well, now it's 50 50. And when you roll the dice, and again, the beauty of the show, is it different for everybody? Everybody has different pressure points in life. We'll get to a game and we'll get to $5,000 and I look over and the man or woman is almost in tears. And you realize that this $5,000 is enough to change somebody's life. And so you and I are talking about the game and I get excited about the game as well and beating the game because you're a fan of game shows. Well, to a lot of these contestants, this is an opportunity for them to make five, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and that will change their life. That's all they came on the show to do. And so I have as much respect and even more love for them than I do the Ken Jennings of the world that are trying to just beat my game. Because this is a life-changing moment for some of these people. And they had to come on the show and earn it. Yes, there's a little luck involved sometimes of how the questions fall and maybe you guess. But what I love about millionaires, if you get money on my show, you've earned it. You had to get on there, you earn the right to be there, you earn the right to make that money and walk away. And there's something truly American about that. It's what our country was built on, was that concept of if you work hard, you can earn this money. And so I just love those moments of, you know, it's not a million dollars. It's 10000 or 30000 and this just got this person out of debt. And it's going to solve a lot of problems in this person's life. And you have to stop it and see the humanity in that. That's part of my job as host, is bringing that to you. Absolutely. It certainly is a life-changing opportunity. And speaking of life-changing opportunities, Chris, it is now time for me, an aspiring game show host, to host an original game for you, a current game show host. Are you ready for the game of the day? I don't know if I'm ready, but I, as I do with everything in life, bring it on. Well, this is the game okay. of the day. Game of the day. And it is called Millionaire Millionaire. Millionaire Millionaire. Okay. So here's how we play. This is a millionaire style game, and all the questions are going to be about the history of who wants to be a millionaire. And oh, I, God. And I know you're a huge fan of the show, so this is right up your alley. 
Okay. You've already thrown out like 20 facts during our interview. I'm like, oh, wow, that's an interesting fact. I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe they'll come in handy. <laughs> so I have five multiple choice questions, each of which deals with some aspect of Millionaire's history. The questions will get progressively harder, and the point values will increase along the way. So the first question is worth 100,000 points, the second 200,000 points, third 300,000, fourth 400,000, and fifth 500,000. All right. So for every correct answer, I'll add the question's point value to your score. And to win, Chris, guess how many points you got to get? One million points. You are so smart. Too bad that question wasn't worth any points. Well, I thought that was the first question. <laughs> but I do have to tell you, if you do not get to a million points by those five questions, I do have one final question. And if you get that right, that will automatically get you one million points. I like to get out of jail free card. Basically, yeah. And even better, you have two lifelines. What would be a millionaire without lifelines? Exactly. So you have a 50-50, which of course takes away two wrong answers, leaving one correct answer and the wrong one. And it's the return of Double Dip. Remember Double Dip? I do remember Double Dip. Luckily, I never had to do that. <laughs> and as a refresher, Double Dip allows you to give two answers on a single question. However, because 50-50 takes away two wrong answers and Double Dip allows you to answer the question twice, you may not use both lifelines on the same question. That makes sense. All right, now that all the rules have been explained, Chris, are you ready to play Millionaire Millionaire? Let's do it. Bring it. Audience, are you ready to play Millionaire Millionaire? They sound ready to go too. Let's play Millionaire Millionaire. And here comes your first question. This is worth 100,000 points. Got it. How much time were contestants given to answer each of the first five questions when Millionaire featured the question time clock? A, 10 seconds. B, 15 seconds, C, 20 seconds, or D, 30 seconds? I'm going to say B, 15 seconds, and that is my final. It is B, 15 seconds, 100,000 points. That's a good start. Excellent start. That is how you want to start the game. You have 100,000 points. We are going for 200,000 points now. <laughs> Which of these current game show hosts won $500,000 for charity during a celebrity edition of Millionaire? A. Pat Sajak B. Drew Carey C. Alex Trebek D. Wayne Brady I'm going to take a guess here. I would narrow it down, but I'm just going to take a guess. Okay. I want to say it's Drew Carey. Is that your final? Yeah, I'm going to make that my final. Is that Drew Carey final... Was there any other option you were thinking? I was trying to think of who it was. Wayne Brady? No, I don't think so. You can't be sure that. That's too easy. Sajak would jump out of me because he's the smarter of all of them. You didn't use a lifeline, and it's a good thing you didn't. It's Drew Carey. You have 200,000 points. It is Drew Carey. Don't try to lead me off my initial instinct. I'm trying to do a you. I'm trying to draw out the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Two for two. This is better than I thought I would do with this game. You have 300,000 points. You're 700,000 points away. And this question is worth 300,000 points. The first of only two contestants to ever answer a million-dollar question incorrectly, Ken Basin was asked a question regarding which U.S. president... A. Harry Truman, B. Dwight Eisenhower, C. Lyndon Johnson, or D. Richard Nixon? So the question was about this president. The million dollar question that he got wrong, Ken Basin, was about which president? Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, Lyndon B. Johnson, or Richard Nixon? I'm going to narrow it down to 50-50 here. All right. Take away two wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. You're left with C. Lyndon B. Johnson or D. Richard Nixon. Oh, wow. I'm going to go LBJ. I'm going to go Texas. Is that your final? That is my final. It is not Richard Nixon. It is Lyndon B. Johnson. You got it for 300,000 points. Oh, God bless Texas. I threw Richard Nixon in there as a little bit of a trick. Richard Nixon was actually the answer to John Carpenter's million-dollar question. And by the way, this was the actual question regarding Lyndon B. Johnson. For ordering his favorite beverages on demand, LBJ had four buttons installed in the Oval Office labeled coffee, tea, coke, and what? Fresca, V8, Yoohoo, or A&W? Do you know what the answer is? It was either V8 or Yoohoo, right? Well, what are you going with? I'm going to go V8. Is that your final? That is my final. It was actually Fresca. 
Prescott. Yeah, Ken Basin actually answered Yoohoo, which was his initial instinct, and the answer with the highest audience percentage after he asked the audience. But funny story actually, I was actually at trivia night one night with my friends, and one of the questions they asked was, which president had buttons on his Oval Office desk to signal for different types of drinks? And of course it was LBJ, so because of Millionaire, I was able to get a question right for my team at Trivia Night. Is that great? That is awesome. Yeah, it definitely was. You should have seen the look on my face when I heard what the question was. I leapt out of my seat, startled all my friends, and I told them, listen to me, this was a million dollar question on Millionaire, the first ever million dollar question to be answered incorrectly by a contestant. I know the answer. I'm gonna ask a favor going to ask the audience, starts cheering in advance, and just stops abruptly if I get it wrong, because C, final answer, give me a million dollars. No, it's not the final answer, and you just lost a lot of money. It's Fresca. Fresca. Ken leaves with $25,000. But anyway, back to the game. You have 600,000 points, and the next question is worth 400,000 points, which means, Chris, if you get this next question correct, you will have 1 million points and will be deemed a winner of Millionaire Millionaire. All right, let's do it. For 400,000 points and the win. In 2001, Kevin Olmsted became the biggest game show money winner at the time when he won how much money on Millionaire? A... 1,870,000, B, 1,940,000, C, 2,060,000, or D, 2,180,000. You still have a double dip. So I get two shots at this. Yes. I'm going to go with 1.94 is my first guess. Oh, so you're going to use the double dip. I'll use the double dip because I have it. my last one. So I'll start with D. Final. Final. It is not B. You have one more guess. It's either A, 1,870,000, C, 2,060,000, or D, 2,180,000. I'm going to say C. That was my guy. I'll say C. Final? Final. Everything on the line. All the chips on the table. This is for a win. Unfortunately, you have to go through another question. It was D, 2,180,000. One more question. One more question. No lifelines. It's all up to you, and here it is. For two million one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, let's play. Who is credited with inventing the first mass-produced helicopter? Igor Sikorsky, Elma Sperry, Ferdinand von Zeppelin, Gottlieb Daimler. I know this. It was the Sikorsky helicopter. So I'm going to make Sikorsky my final answer. Just one, two million. It was because of a progressive jackpot that occurred back when Regis was hosting. They upped the ante $10,000 each episode. Question 15 I was remember, an answer. I, I remember that. It was like a lottery. I forgot they did that. That's really funny. I remember that you'd watch every night. If no one won it, it would go higher. Right. Imagine if they did that now, because the last one was in 2003. Imagine what the jackpot would have been at now. <laughs> you were playing for $1 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be a billionaire? <laughs> That's right. So we are continuing on. This is the 500,000 point question. And once again, if you get this question correct, Chris, you will win Millionaire Millionaire. However, you have no lifelines left. All right. 500,000 point question. Who is Andy Walmsley? That's W-A-L-M-S-L-E-Y. Who is Andy Walmsley? A, millionaire set designer. B, the first ever millionaire contestant, C, the creator of the final answer catchphrase, or D, the first ever zero dollar winner. I'm gonna go A, he was a set designer. Is that your final? That's my final. You seem very confident. I feel good about it. And you should, you just won Millionaire Millionaire. <laughs> I 
I met Andy. He came on set and I had the honor of meeting him. And he actually had a rendition of the original set, which is why I knew that answer. See? Look at that. See? That, that worked out well. I know, you never know. And with 1,100,000 points, Chris Harrison, you have just won a millionaire millionaire. <laughs> I love it. I will redeem those coupons at the gift shop on the way out. Perfect. The confetti is flying, and it's another magical game show moment. And by the way, the million point question was this, in case you wanted to know, in case our audience yes. is curious. The million point question was, in 2013, TV Guide ranked Millionaire as what number on its 60 greatest game shows of all time list? Was it A, number 4, B, number 6, C, number 8, or D, number 10? Ooh, I would say 4 or 6. I would say 6. And that's your final? Yes. Well, if you didn't get all those other questions, you would have had to play this question. And you would have got it right. You got the million point question right. Come on, that's not bad. I missed one question today. That's pretty good. Hey, that is more than pretty good. That is excellent, Chris. And your total score is 2,100,000 points, which technically means you have won Millionaire Millionaire not once, but twice. Trebek's got nothing on me. <laughs> That's right. And next time we see Trebek, tell him that on Bradley Clark's radio talk show, The Game Show, you played a game called Millionaire Millionaire, and you answered five out of six questions correct. I'm sure he'll be very jealous and impressed. That's right. And that was the game of the day, Millionaire Millionaire. Millionaire Millionaire. Well, Chris, I sincerely hope you've had fun today talking with me about Millionaire and playing the game because I've certainly had fun. It's been fun. It's such a great joy to host the show and to be given that honor of being in charge of this show because I know there are people like you out there that truly love game shows and then to be allowed in this community. And luckily, I've been very welcomed by the game show community. And I love when people come on the show that are fans like yourself and that have been watching for years and years and they say, I love that it's in your hands now. I love what you've been doing with the show. I get a lot of pride from that to know that true fans of the show are back watching it and they're back to loving it and they love what I'm doing with my version of the show. It's not lost on me that this isn't mine. I'm just renting it for as long as they'll have it happening. And so I feel like for people like yourself that love game shows, I owe it to you guys to do what I do and to do it as well as I can. And so I appreciate it. Well, if I can speak for the entire game show community, we are so thrilled that you're a member. And as one of your fellow game show community members, I look forward to watching many more seasons of you hosting Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Thanks for the time and thanks for having me on. Thanks for the show. And I love this game show community. It's good to be a part of. Well, you are very welcome. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being my guest on this episode of The Game Show and taking the time to talk with me about the game we both love and cherish. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All right, Bradley. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Now, remember, Game Show Superfans Week. you got to make that happen. You are the first contestant. Hey, that sounds like a plan to me. And Chris, you are always welcome back as my guest again on The Game Show to talk about Millionaire or any other aspect of the game show world you want to chat about. I appreciate it. Thanks, Bradley. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Chris. Bye. What a nice guy and such a great host he is. And what a thrill to have him say to me, Bradley Clark, is that your final? Another check added to my Game Show bucket list. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode of The Game Show. A big thanks once again to the current host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Chris Harrison, for being my guest today. And if you'd like to re-listen to this episode, including the exciting game segment with Chris Harrison, Millionaire Millionaire, or if you'd like to listen to any of my previous episodes of The Game Show, feel free to log on to www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark. That's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets slash The Game Show. That's www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark. That's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets slash The Game Show. And of course, be sure to tune in next time for another episode of the talk show about television game and competition shows, The Game Show. I'm Bradley Clark, the Bradster, saying bye for now. This edition of The Game Show was created and produced by Bradley Clark and was recorded at the WRG Studios. This is Austin Angelo speaking.
The Game Show is a Bradley Clark production. Get your game on.